they haven't figured out what to do or whatever, uh, and have not worried about that because of the non-use issue, uh, now have to worry because um, if this becomes signed into, in, uh, into law, then if you choose to uh, develop the water on your property, you will, your priority date will be set at 1999, or the date of the signing of this agreement. And so now then there's all these folks who have made a claim to water, many of which are non-Indians, and, uh, and because they are first in time now, they will have first in right, um, should, there's, there's a question. Through the negotiations I was involved since the 90s, and that's wrong. The Latis have a claim through the BIA. The BIA makes a claim for them. And Bill, I think, has a water right that was claimed for him through the BIA, and it showed up on the DNRC website. His water right is on there. And you didn't make the claim? <coughs> My dad must have. Somebody made the claim, but maybe it showed up on, because he has fee land, it showed up on a DNRC mm -hmm. website as a state-based water right, but it still has reserves on there. And as a lot tees, their rights are protected under the government as trustee. And that part is wrong there, I can tell you that by first-hand experience. Each lot T is protected because BIA, as a trustee, is obligated to protect the water rights, and they, they are included in that project area as existing current users. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to continue with the presentation and uh, and then at the end we can have more discussion. Okay. I'm going to mark down your question though. That's that's an important point. Okay. His his comment was that um, he's saying that I'm not quite saying that correctly regarding the the allotments. Isn't that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. The right. rights are protected under the He's saying that the allotments rights are protected. Okay. But that two is one was the state users and then the tribal users and the state. Um, brought theirs to the table along with the tribal site. The tribal site was the responsibility of the BIA to bring up the current users on the irrigation project right. and then integrate both of them into that project area. So they're protected. Thank you. Um, let's go ahead. Um, some of you are probably thinking, I'm not an irrigator. I'm not a, a, a farmer, and, but there are a number of uh, beneficial uses. Um, so let me let me uh, back up a little bit in my in my thinking. For non-Indians, uh, if you make a water right claim and it's filed, but then you fail to use that water and you're checked up on. If you haven't made a, uh, made a use of that water for 10 years, you can lose your water right. And so, uh, all those that are, uh, you know, that fall under the state, if they have water rights and they they fail to use their water, they can lose lose that uh, right right to use. So the non-use issue was uh, important, and maybe Bill can speak more concerning that in his presentation. But I just wanted to show, these are not all of the, the reasons that people want to use their water, but there's a lot of uses, and there's going to be a lot of uses in the future that will be very important. Water is a very important topic. Next, please. Okay, under water rights history, uh, this is the last slide that I have under that kind of topic. But uh, ever since the, the dam was approved in the, in the 1940s, and then through the construction and so forth, what we're seeing here is a picture of the Yellowtail Dam with its 525-foot structure 
Here's the after bay dam, 72 foot high structure which regulates the flow of water into the Bighorn River. Um, not everything was completely clean in terms of all the interactions between the federal government and uh, the government entities and the tribe. There had been uh, a history of problems. So what is being promised then with this uh, compact and water rights settlement act is uh, quite a bit of money. And so there's a lot of questions about the money and what, you know, what, what will become of that. And so, uh, next please. Um, about a month ago there was a meeting in Billings and uh, one of the attorneys that was involved in, in writing the compact uh, or the settlement act Katie Morgan had this to say about the money at that meeting. She said the, the tribe sat down with the U.S. to examine claims the tribe had against the government for its failure to protect the water quality and maintain the irrigation system. And that's how they came up with the calculation for the $460 million. To me, It seems there is an admission that there was a failure on the part of the U.S. government to keep up with potable water and the irrigation system, and that even if you vote no on this uh, uh, Compact and Water Rights Settlement Act, there is a reason for negotiation because that failure is still there. There are water quality issues. There are, uh, that have been documented by the EPA and so forth. And I think some of you are probably way more aware than I am of, of the problems with the irrigation system. So where is this money supposed to go? Well, there, the first line up there uh, has to do with the municipal, rural, and industrial system. The next line item has to do with the operations, maintenance, and repair of that. That's more than half of it, uh, uh, 300 of it anyway. Then there's the Crow Irrigation Project and its operation, maintenance, and repair. And then after all that money's been accounted for, we're down to 20 million for energy development and less than 5 million for the compact administration. When you add all those numbers up, you get 460 million. <coughs> Nobody's going to be getting a check. So if there's some illusion that somehow we're going to get a check or something like that, that's just not going to happen. The other uh, question I, I would throw out is, let's suppose we go ahead with this and, and they go to do all this construction. Uh, will they hire pro-tribe